time no see YouTube. I have definitely been slacking in the video department the past couple months, but that's just part of it. I've been doing a lot of YouTube shorts and those are pretty fun to make. I guess it's like a real TikTok thing and I don't know, they're easy and quick and I can do them before I leave every day and that's pretty much what I've been doing. But today I'm going to try to make a quick video of a little project I've been working on for myself the past, I don't know, probably about the past month I've been kind of collecting parts and truthfully, I don't really even know if it's going to work yet. From what I have read, I think it will, but I'm going to give it a shot either way. So, if you don't know me or uh, haven't been following long, I've got a red and white 55 Chevrolet. It's a 210, two-door post car. Uh, it's been in our family since 1979. My grandpa, he bought it, um, passed it down to me. We, Me, him, and my dad, we redone it in the late 2000s, finished the car in like 2010, 2011. Um, probably my biggest complaint with the car, and most people wouldn't they really could care less probably but when we done the car i installed a cheaper front disc brake kit that uh, basically just runs on a stock spindle so if you're a 55 6 7 guy like me you know that all your cheaper brake kits basically what they do is stock spindle uh, you basically put a bracket on the spindle it runs a g-body style caliper and a chevelle like a 70 chevelle front rotor so this rotor right here like a floating rotor um a Chevelle or a body rotor would basically have the hub made into it so the studs and the bearings and all would be inside the rotor. Um, the downside of doing the cheaper kits on the tri fives is it move usually like my kit it moves each wheel out seven eighths of an inch so basically inch and three quarter is what the track width is increased by um, and a lot of cars you don't notice it so bad. My car I have torque thrust D's, these Americans right here. This is a 15 by 10 that I've just had on the shelf for a while and I'm using it for mock-up, but my car run 15 by sixes on the front, 15 by eights on the back. Um, but even with the six inch wheel, I run a 225-70-15 tire. And for me, it's very noticeable that the track width is increased and you know, the wheels, they stick out further than what I would like. I love a, you know, you know, Tri-5 has got stop track width and it's hammered down in the front and it's tucking the front wheels and tires. I just think that's a killer look. So to go about that with a you know decent budget, I mean, I can order a, I could order the CPP zero offset brake kit. Um, it's, I just ordered one for another customer and it's probably 500, 550 bucks. Um, gets me a two inch drop spindle and it keeps the factory track width. But I really hate to go about doing all that when everything I have is already decent and I can just keep running the spindles and stuff that I already got. So what I am doing now is to keep the brackets and the calipers that I have, I am going to pull the A-body rotors off and I am going to this this style hub. So most of the, the OG older generation uh, Tri-5 guys, they know that a 61 to 68 Impala front hub is kind of a direct swap to a stock spindle. Um, this was kind of an old school trick because it went to the newer style bearings and got rid of the big uh, junk bearings that 55s have. So 61, 68 Impala um, hub, it's got you know new races, new bearings, new seal. Um, I did end up putting long studs in this and I've had to cut them down because they were way too long for what I needed um, to run my lugs. But the only thing I had to do was I did, you notice I took, put this in my lathe and I turned the outside edge down. But what I'm gonna do is run the Impala hub on a stock 55 spindle, keep my same caliper bracket, run my same G-body calipers, um, but I am going to a, this is like an 8081 Trans Am rear disc so all your trans am guys they had disc brake rear ends in like 80 81 maybe 79 i'm not sure but that's just a rear disc so now that i have machined the outside edge down on the hub it that hub will fit inside this rotor and now my track width will go back to stock so tomorrow i'm gonna go pull all my front stuff apart put the new hub on grease everything good, slip the rotor on, put the caliper back on, and then today, like I said, I mocked everything up. You can see I've got it mocked up in this wheel, 
and got my studs cut down to where I needed them. But this should put my track width back the way I want it and be a cheap and easy upgrade um, and get it back the way I needed it. So I will cut this off and like I said tomorrow I will try to film a little bit on the car as I put it together. All right, so you can see I got the first side finished. Got the Impala hub on, Trans Am rear brake rotor, and still use my stock spindle, the caliper bracket I already had, and the G-body caliper. All went back just like I figured it would. Um, I did have to, the threads on my spindle were a little messy from the other rotors. Like I said, that was from the cheaper disc brake kit. And um, With this Impala hub setup, I've actually got more thread engagement for my spindle nut, which was nice. I was glad to see that. And it actually made the cotter key go back in the factory hole on the spindle, which was nice because with this setup, um, it had the the front bearing or the, the, the snout was a little bit further out. So having less thread engagement, I ended up having to redrill a second hole for where the cotter key went. So after I kind of got my threads straightened back out from when we put this together about I don't know, probably 15 years ago. Like I said, this is much improved. I kind of got that straightened out. Uh, all my bushings and ball joints and everything still look good and in good shape. So um, pretty much gonna throw the wheel back on it and I got one more side to do and I'm gonna set this thing on the ground and see what it looks like. Well, just set it on the ground for the first time and it did exactly what I figured it would do. It moved each side in three quarters of an inch. So. I pulled a tape on the floor and overall it's a inch and three quarters narrower than it was before so it's back to factory track width um, only issue i've got right now is my wheel weights on both my wheels they hit my caliper bracket so i've got to grind a little spot on my caliper bracket but other than that it's good to go and now i can knock about two more inches out of the front and get the front end lower but i need to go ahead and convert it to side motor mounts put a transmission cross member and cut my mid mounts out of it and then uh, change my headers so I can lower it, but it's always the snowball effect with these old cars. So overall, I'm happy with it. And I said it's definitely got the wheels and tires tucked back under it the way I wanted it. So like I said I'm really, really happy with it so far. But if you're on a budget or just like me and you want to be cheap and you want to get the factory track width, that's an easy way to do it. 